Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of Eye of the Dragon, Cruel and Beautiful, Rabbit Hole, King D.L., Lauren Frey, Grim, Clover, and the upcoming Jaw of the Dragon. So, with Sonic Frontiers getting a brand new trailer for Nintendo Switch and other inferior, lesser, irrelevant platforms, I was very, very surprised by the response to the trailer, because I have made numerous statements in the past talking about Sonic fanboys and their unwillingness to admit any real flaws with the franchise. For the past decade, at least, every Sonic game is hyped up to be a masterpiece in the making, better than anything that Nintendo could come up with. And then it launches and uh, is complete trash, and people just kind of move on to the next Sonic game. It's been moving in a cycle like that for, for years now. But now, with Frontiers, uh, getting our trailer, uh, seeing the gameplay, uh, seeing that Sega did hire that man, seeing what they've done with this, I am extremely taken aback by the negative reaction to this. I, I stated myself that, like, the game looks like it's running in Unreal Engine 4, right? It legit looks like someone took a bunch of stock assets and, like, threw Sonic in it. <laughs> like, the aesthetic doesn't match. Like, it, it, it looks awful, right? And I, and I made a video, like, giving my thoughts on that. Um, I, I didn't pay attention initially to, like, the fan response. But now that I have, now that I have seen just how poorly received this trailer was, like, I am very, very surprised that Sonic fans are critical of this. Like, so they're not happy that the game looks as lazy as it does, that it doesn't seem to have anything going for it, that there's no real reason to pick this up. This is not the open-world Sonic game that Sonic fanboys were looking forward to. This is um, this is just another disaster waiting to happen. And it interests me a lot to see it this happen um, immediately after the release of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which supposedly was a very big success at the box, box, office, bo uh, the box office. It, it makes me feel as if Sonic is no longer a gaming icon. Sonic is primarily known for his multimedia appearances, right? Like, when people think of Sonic, they don't think of the games. They think of the cartoons, the comics, the, the tie-in material. Like, uh, the fact that race car drivers have been given, given Sonic trophies. Like, uh, they think of the marketing. They think of anything but the fucking games. And, and now I think that's really, really coming back to bite them because... Sonic games, essentially, are licensed games for the multimedia franchise. They they have that feel to them. They have that distinct look. They're lazy. They're, they're unintuitive. They don't have a lot of content. They, uh, they're, repi uh, repi uh, rep uh, they're repetitive. I was going to say repetish. <laughs> Is that even a word? Repetitive. They don't... They're not good games. And I would say correctly, that they, they've never been good. Stupid children who had never played a video game before were sold on the idea of Sonic being better than Mario due to a fucking commercial. The fact that like people, people remember that commercial 31 years later says a lot about it. The only reason you ever bought a Genesis was because it did things that Nintendo don't go out of business, apparently. Uh, and seeing Sonic Frontiers Sonic's big 30th anniversary game, well, 31st anniversary, I suppose, seeing this game in action, there is no, there is no future for this franchise. Like, there's nowhere for it to go from here. Um, everything, everyone, nobody is enthusiastic about the future of this pathetic mascot character. 